We're continuing with the topic of uh, Kushua in the prayer. <clears throat> Excuse me. Kushua in the prayer. And alhamdulillah, everyone did pretty good on the quiz today. And I think the whole thing is, again, understanding the meaning of these Arabic terms when we hear them. Okay, because Arabic is not a religion. It's just the language. And um, the last time we met, I played for you uh, excerpts from uh, videos of other famous people trying to explain what Kushu and the prayer is. And the first person who's famous speaker who I played, he spoke about Kushu and never answered. He said most people think that it means concentration. And he and, and most people think it means to focus. And he started talking in, in, in Arabic and nobody understood what the heck he was talking about, including me. He never explained what it meant. But on his face, on his page, it said, you will never understand it until you learn Arabic. And that's wrong. And then another person I played for you yet the last time we met, a famous female speaker who she, the people think is a scholar. She was asked about Kushua. She said Kushua is something that disappears the longer you delay it. She said, and whenever you delay the prayer, whenever, unless you pray the prayer on time, as soon as the Adhan is called, you're going to lose Kushua. That's what she said. And that wasn't correct either. So I think everyone here, based on the last, the lecture I gave, understands Kushua is an Arabic word that simply means to stand before Allah in full concentration with focus and attention on him and what you're saying. And as I told you guys on the quiz today, for those of you who speak French, if I were to use a French word, réfléchissez. Réfléchissez avant de parler. That means think before you speak. Well, just like we réfléchissez means to think, to think, to ponder, to concentrate, to focus. That's what Kushua is. Focus on what you're saying. You're going to stand before Allah in humility, aware that you're about to have a conversation with him because that's what the prayer is. The prayer is a talk between you and Allah. You and Allah. You and Allah. So I'm going to give Allah my attention. I'm going to put my focus on what I'm saying and what I'm doing. I'm going to perform the, the positions of the prayer perfectly and correctly to win his love, his acceptance, his approval. That's kushua. And it does not diminish. It does not disappear based on the time that you perform the prayer. You know, I want you guys to understand Allah tells us in the Quran that each prayer has its fixed time. And the prophet Muhammad explained that verse to us. He said, this means that every prayer begins and it ends with the adhan of the next one, except for Fajr. Fajr ends when the sun rises. So in other words, if Dhur comes in at one o'clock in the afternoon and Asr, comes in at six o'clock in the evening. You have between the hours of one and six to perform dhur. This is a mercy from Allah. Allah gave these prayers to fix times to allow you to be able to fulfill your obligations to him 
without causing a hardship on you because he knows that all of us have different lifestyles. You may not can perform dhur as soon as the adhan is called because you're busy doing something else. You could be a surgeon doing surgery. You could be at work. You could be busy cooking. And if you leave the food, the food will burn. You don't have to pray the prayer as soon as the adhan is called. You get the reward as long as you pray it before the Avon is called for the next one. And these people who tell you stuff like your kushua diminishes, they don't know anything. They don't know the Quran. They don't know the Sunnah. They don't know what they're talking about. And they're making religion hard on people. There's numerous hadiths that proved how the prophet would delay the prayer for different reasons. Okay? Even the Isha prayer, even the Isha prayer, sometimes he'd pray that he would delay the Isha prayer to 12 o'clock at night. Everybody knows that. So are you telling me because the prophet delayed his, the Isha prayer till 12 that he didn't have Kushua? His Kushua was gone. It had diminished. There's other hadiths that show that sometimes he would delay it until the, a third of the night. Uh, the, the last third of the night, right, be right before the last third. <coughs> so he had no kushua. Sometimes the prophet would delay the prayer because of the weather. So there was no kushua. So again, we'd be careful listening to these people talk about Islam. Just because a person is famous and sitting up on YouTube or Facebook making videos, that doesn't make him a scholar. The true scholars of the religion are few guys. We're living in the days where there's a lot of famous speakers. But how many of those speakers know what they're talking about? How many of them are backing up what they say? If you're going to tell me that my kushua is, is diminishing because I'm praying my prayer uh, later, where's the verse to prove it? Because I can show you a bunch of hadiths where the prophet delayed the prayer for various different reasons. And nowhere does it say you lose in Kushua. Okay? So I think you guys here as students all understand the meaning of Kushua. So now today what I'm going to do is go over some of the rulings that relate to it. And these rulings are based on what Allah and the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And again, a lot of people ask the question, is it obligatory to have focus attentiveness during the prayer yes common sense how can you think Allah is going to accept your prayer if you're not sincere if you're not focused on what you're saying remember guys Allah himself tells us in the Quran in the interpretation of the meaning seek help in patience and the prayer and truly it is extremely hard Except for those who have kushua. We talked about this verse the other day. For those people who don't have concentration. For those people who don't have that attentiveness. They're the ones that find the prayer difficult. They're the ones that find the prayer hard to perform. And also they're the ones who make mistakes in their prayer. They're the ones that forget. That don't ponder. They're the ones who are condemned. And based on that verse from Stuart Bakra, that's the, that is the proof that having kushua is obligatory. And it's common sense. <coughs> also another verse. Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning, successful indeed are the believers. The believers are those who offer their prayers with sincerity and full submissiveness. They are indeed the inheritors who shall inherit paradise and live there forever. Here Allah is telling us that the people who will attain paradise are only those who used to offer their prayers with sincerity and concentration on him. So again, this is another verse that proves that having kushua is an obligation. We have to make sure that when we perform our prayer, our mind is set on Allah. 
We have to make sure that when we approach our prayer, we approach it with calmness and humility, performing the prostrations and the positions correctly. You don't want to be a person who runs through the prayer uh, 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 like a fox, who packs the ground like a crow. You don't want to be a person who does not raise his head from the bowing. You don't want to be a person that does any of those things that the prophet mentions in the hadiths. He tells us that over and over in numerous hadiths to take our time to perform the positions properly. Don't raise your hair before the imam. Don't sit there playing with your clothing. Don't sit there fiddling with your fingers, picking at your hair and all that stuff because that stuff distracts away from the prayer. Okay. So thus, having concentration during a prayer is an obligation. And in regards to the virtues of it and those who neglect it, listen to what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. He said the five prayers which Allah has made obligatory, whoever performs wudu properly for them, praise them on time. And when he talks about praying them on time, on time means in the time frame that Allah has allotted. The time frame. As long as I pray my prayer within the time frame that Allah has allotted, I've prayed it on time. It does not mean praying it as soon as the adhan is called. Okay? Each prayer has a fixed time. If Dhuar comes in at one, Asr comes in at six. As long as you perform that prayer between one and six, before the Adhan is called for Asr, you've made it on time. And the prophet said that. The ending of each prayer is at the Adhan of the next, except for Fajr. Fajr ends at sunrise. So here the prophet is saying, whoever makes wudu, praise the prayer on time, does the, the prostration and bowing correctly has established kushua. And it is a promise from Allah that he will be forgiven of his sins. But whoever does not do this has no such promise. If Allah wishes, he may forgive him of his sins. Or if he wishes, he may not. And as you can see in this hadith here, Nowhere does the Prophet Muhammad say that if you pray the prayer late or delay it, you lose kushua. So I don't know where that sister got that comment from. Okay. Also in another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever makes wudu, performs it well, prays two rakats, focusing on them, see, focus, focusing on them completely and not think of, uh, thinking of anything else. He will be forgiven of his previous sins. So again, all these hadiths are the proof that kushua is an obligation. And also these hadiths are the proof that having kushua is what gets you forgiveness of your sins and all of that. And also it proves what kushua means. Focus, concentration. Reflet she say. Okay? Also guys, uh, when we look at the things that help us to have kushu in prayer, we find that they can be divided into two different categories. One being the strong desire to want to do what's obligatory. That's a sign of a believer. The true believer wants to do what Allah commanded him to do because you want to earn Allah's love. You want to earn Allah's uh, uh, forgiveness and approval. And also the second category, the ability to resist that which can weaken your connection with Allah, weaken your concentration and your focus on him. Okay, so again, those two things can help you to develop your kushua. If you really want to earn Allah's pleasure, remember we talked about paradise, how there will be some people who Allah said, he will never allow the hellfire to touch because they earned his love. 
You want to be that. You want to be a person who has earned Allah's love so that you never do any time at all in hell. And the only way you can obtain that type of love is to fulfill your obligations to Allah. That means wearing your hijab because Allah commanded it, not fearing your mother. That means performing your prayers with concentration, fasting, doing Ramadan, covering your body the way Allah commanded, providing and maintaining your family because it's an obligation. Okay? And also, guys, when we talk about the second one, the ability to resist the things that can weaken your concentration. Well, one of the ways to uh, make your prayer stronger, whereas this won't happen, is to imagine that you are standing before a law. Even though you cannot see him, you know that he can see you. This is what helps to strengthen your kushua while you're praying. Just imagine that Allah is standing in front of you and you're talking to him. I'm talking to you, Allah. For those of you who have to pray sitting, same thing. You have to pray sitting. Imagine that you are sitting in front of Allah and Allah hears you. Allah sees you and you're talking to him. Know the meaning of that fatiha. He's answering you back every, every verse. Okay? That will help to strengthen your kushua and help you to resist the things that can break it. Okay? Just like when you're talking to your husband. You don't sit there and let your mind wander to the groceries and all that when you're talking to your husband. You're, you're concentrating on you and him. Well, the same with the law. When you make salat, you're, it's a talk between you and Allah. So you're not going to let yourself wonder and think about other things when you're communicating with him. And also this will help you love the prayer more. As we talked about today on the quiz, the stronger your concentration, your focus, the more you will love to pray because you know that this is your time with Allah. This is your time to talk to Allah. This is your time with him. So you'll find comfort in the prayer. You will want to pray. You will look forward to those prayers. Like I gave you the example. I'm sick. I have uh, asthma. Okay. And uh, yesterday when I got home from the doctor, he put me on four different medicines. I took it at 10 o'clock. Excuse me. I didn't wake up until six. So what I did when I woke up, I combined. I made dhur and then I made asr. Because I missed door because I was sleep, uh, sick, sleep. Okay? And I knew that when I took the next dosage, because it was time for me to take another dosage, I knew that when I took it, I was going to be knocked out for another eight hours. So what I did is when it was time for my grip, I made myself, de myself delay my medicine until my grip. When my grip came in, I took those other pills and I combined. I made my grip and I combined it with Isha. So that way I didn't have to worry about waking up this morning feeling bad because I missed Isha. <coughs> I wanted to have my time with Allah. I wanted to thank Allah for giving me life. I wanted to thank Allah for curing me of my sickness. I wanted to thank Allah for keeping me well. So I did my, my grip and then I combined with Isha. And for those of you who don't know, you can also combine your prayers when you're sick. Okay? So this is one of the benefits of having kushua. Okay? You look forward to your time with Allah. You're not going to want to miss out on it. So you're going to, you know, do what you have to do to fulfill that obligation. And also, the more you pray to Allah, you're strengthening your relationship with Him. And in turn, this is strengthening your faith. This is making you and Allah closer. That's what the prophet meant when he said, in this world, women and perfume are the two things he loves the, the most. But he don't love them more than the prayer. He don't put those things more than Allah. 
because and that's how we should be and like I say and for the sister in class today who talked about hijab you know her mother doesn't want her to wear hijab your mother shouldn't come before law okay also in another hadith the prophet said let us find comfort in the prayer and the prayer should be a comfort for you because again this is your time with Allah he did not say, let's get the prayer done and over with. You don't want to rush to the prayer. Take your time and talk to Allah. Spend that five minutes with Allah. So seeking knowledge of the importance of the prayer. This will help to increase your faith. And you will also find comfort in fulfilling that obligation. Okay. In regards to resisting the things that weaken the prayer, that means you have to work to push away anything that will distract you and make you think of something other than the prayer itself. For example, my sickness. I wasn't going to be one of those weak Muslims to use my sicknesses. Some people get sick and they don't feel bad because they missed the prayer. They look at it like, oh, I can, since I'm sick, this is a, a, a valid excuse to not pray. No, it's not. Even if you are sick, you are supposed to still pray. Don't allow shaitan, you know, to put things in your mind to distract you from fulfilling your obligation to Allah. And also, even during the prayer, your personal jinn is going to try to distract you. He's going to make you think about the food you have to cook today or how you have to go to work or remember to do this and remember to do that. You have to push that stuff away from your mind. And then for some of us, our personal jinn will distract us to the point that you forget the fatiha or you forget how many rakats you pray. We have to work on resisting this. The stronger your concentration is with Allah during the prayer, these things won't happen. Just like when you're talking to your husband, you don't get distracted. You find yourself not distracted, you know, the stronger your kushu is. So thus, guys, for today, I want you guys to ponder that kushua during the prayer is first of all an obligation we're obligated to focus on Allah as we're praying and also the level of your concentration determines if your prayer is truly accepted by Allah a lot of people ask me sister Layla how do I know if Allah has accepted my prayer well you don't know but there are certain signs that you can look for how focused were you when you made your prayer, did you keep your mind focused on Allah? Or did you deviate to other thoughts? Also, we learned today that kushua is not easy to attain. But it can be attained based on your strength of faith. You claim you believe in Allah. Show him. Show Allah how much you believe in him. By seeing if you can remain focused on him as you perform that prayer. And tomorrow what we're going to do is talk about things that we can do to help strengthen our prayer uh, and things that we can do when we do find ourselves being distracted. We're going to talk about those things tomorrow. So we'll stop right here for today. If you guys have any questions. Sunnah Allah, 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 Protectors of the Sunnah Sunnah Baba Protectors of the Sunnah